Hey there everybody and welcome back to more Silent Hill 3. If you may recall last time we had just escaped from the Central Square Shopping Center and we had made our way into the nearby subway station on our way home. Kitty cat. It is very important for your kitty cat to stay strong and healthy otherwise it will kinda look like what's on that uh, advertisement there but Let's go ahead and switch back to the pipe. I mean, we are in a subway, and we might get mugged. Well, that is to say we might get mugged if there was anybody else here in the wadding area. But it actually seems to be eerily empty. Well, maybe this just isn't a good time to ride trains. Who knows? But what it is a good time to do is, uh, I guess, to read a newspaper. Because it seems to be catching Heather's attention. Now, feel free to pause this at your own leisure, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Basically, there was a fatal accident at the Hazel Street Station, which is actually where we're close to, and it involved a man, a man's head, and the head leaving the man's body due to a train. Apparently though, bystanders weren't actually sure why the man happened to be on the tracks, but well, what can we do? It's, uh, it's happened four months ago, so I'm not even sure why the newspaper's here. And with the map, we can actually see that the subway area is actually not too complicated, at least from a visual standpoint, but it can't be that easy, I'm sure. Now, we do have a lot of different ways we can start off with, but first, I think we should check over here because if we check on this gate we will actually get our first puzzle or fetch quest of this area yes as opposed to all the other gates that we'll run across which actually have padlocks on it this one is actually bound up with a chain and a screw or a nut and a bolt rather odd way to secure the door or the gate but I guess we're going to have to figure out some way to get through it. wide open and dark area. What was that? Oh, it's just a trash can. Uh-oh. Yeah, the double heads actually have a fairly big weakness if you are so skilled. If you hit them while they're in mid-jump, you can actually knock them down to the ground immediately and pretty much incapacitate them fairly quickly. Also, with the pipe, you can just keep them stun locked and they'll go down even easier. Now, while the subway actually doesn't have an otherworld counterpart, it does have some fairly, uh otherworld-esque looking areas, such as this particular area. It's kind of hard to tell, but the grating in the center is actually covering up a subway track. But as we get to the edges of the room, you can tell that the there's not really a tunnel, or the tracks don't seem to go anywhere. <laughs>
the hell is that? Oh, let's not stay around. This appears to be a dead end, but at the in the midst of all this trash, we actually find a nutcracker. I suppose this would have been great for that walnut we just had. Maybe the developers were very keen on uh, nuts at the time. But what we're actually going to use this on is that chain and nut and bolt we saw earlier. You can tell we are making headway because as we make our way back, some more enemies have spawned, which we're actually not going to deal with right now. We actually have a few more items to kit down in this dead end here, and oh, what's that on the ground? This doesn't seem the best place to fall asleep, Mr. Hobo. I, I guess Heather doesn't even notice the feet, but... Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and pick up the items and get going. Now before I do open up that gate there, I do want to explore a little bit more because there are some opposing platforms that might have some goodies waiting for us. Not a college that was actually mentioned in that news article we re read before. I know something's catching Heather's attention. It's a, is that a magazine. Yeah, I think that is a magazine. And apparently, it is a magazine that Heather has read before. Yet again, if you want to pause this to read this at your own pace, feel free to do so. Basically, though, it's going with the idea that whenever somebody dies in a horrific way, such as murder or suicide, sometimes their spirit gets bound to that place, and they kind of get stuck in a loop of doing what happened whenever they died. And they kind of, they guess they call them famous suicide spots, which I've never even heard that term. Seems kind of coincidental, though, that we found that newspaper and then we found this magazine, both kind of having to deal with grisly deaths. Some ghosts are really assholes. But yeah, that was actually that was actually a little Easter egg that can be pretty easily missed, and well, it's actually pretty dangerous for an Easter egg because if you don't get back up off the tracks, you will just be instantly killed by a ghost train. But at least coming down here does net us an additional health drink and health item. Our healing items are always beneficial. 
but I just wanted to show that Easter egg off really quick. Uh, for right now, we can actually head back to that locked gate and continue on our way. And actually, though, while we are making our way back, if you happen to notice, some of the subway stops actually mention a Bergen Street. And actually, the overall look of the subway has a very close connection with an 80s horror film known as Jacob's Ladder. For those of you who haven't seen the film, I'd highly recommend going to see it. But for those of you who have seen it, some of the things in this particular area can seem very familiar. Take, for example, this locked gate here. There is actually a scene in the film where the head act, the lead actor, uh, Tim Tom Tim Robbins, happens across a locked gate, and the locked gate is actually locked in the same way as that gate was. And you do want to make sure to investigate inside this rather dilapidated and graffiti covered subway car because there's a present waiting for us. It may be gross, but Heather is correct that this item, the shotgun, will most assuredly be helping us in the future to take down any monsters we may be coming across. Also, waiting for us in the subway car, very nicely, they have bestowed upon us some shotgun shells. It will go nice with our new weapon. Hmm. What the hell is that? Are you okay, buddy? Uh oh. I think I made it mad. Oh. Yeah, say hello to our friend Cancer. And also say goodbye to our friend Cancer because there is actually no need to fight that particular guy. And as you can tell, he does a tremendous amount of damage, and he really does not enjoy being stunlocked, if you can actually stunlock him. Thankfully, though, he is fairly slow, and he is fairly easy to get away from. And we don't actually have to go back up those stairs, so fuck it. Yeah, let's not go to St. Renata College. Instead, let's continue on our way to... Well, that's not any better of an option. But I guess it's the way we do have to go. I still get the feeling we're not really going to be able to catch a train down here. Oh, there's a door, though. I mean, it's not really a good idea to hop on the tracks, but, I mean, this door seems to be the only way to go. Oh. Or maybe not. Run. Yet another fairly nasty instant death trap. If you are not ready and you get taken down by those dogs, there's a very good chance that you will just be instantly killed by this one and only commuter train. saw 
from the cutscene, a door opened. I'm not actually sure how Heather was able to hear it, since it's actually on the far end of the train. But after picking up this health drink, we're actually able to get on the train and hopefully get out of the station. this train is heading. Also, just for those who are curious, if you do happen out the back, uh, make sure not to walk any further because you will, yet again, fall to your death and it will be not cool. So, with no other direction to go, I guess we just have to keep pressing forward. Not before we reach another save point. This one actually has some dialogue connected with it. Just really random dialogue they sometimes attach to those. But we have some rather quaint little fighting to do with some numb bodies. Especially that one in the far distance there. I'm glad he was nice enough to wait for us to bash his friend's head in. here but an upgraded version of the numb body. Uh, yeah, this guy, well he has a bit longer reach, he doesn't really do that much more damage, but he does have a little bit more health. Actually though, he is actually a lot easier to take down because normally those larger numb bodies only come in single numbers and they're actually a lot easier to hit. But we will be seeing more of them in the coming episodes. coupled with a very large, powerful enemy. Well, I guess that gives us a good excuse to try out our shotgun. As you can see, the shotgun actually has pretty good stopping power. It seems to do quite a bit of damage as I kick this guy in his taint. dead yet. You want another kick to the tank? I think you do. Yeah, the shotgun is actually a fairly nice weapon as it has always been in other Silent Hill games. The main problem is this guy just will not die, and we don't really need to waste any more shotgun ammo, so time to finish him off with a pipe to the stomach. Die already. And you can tell it is fully dead when it deflates down. Otherwise, you actually have to do 
you actually had to be fairly careful when dealing with them on the ground because they do have an invincibility frame when getting up and they will immediately smack you in the face. But with that, it appears that our subway journey is at an end, and where we are left off... Well, that's kind of anybody's guess, but there is a save point waiting for us, and with that, I think that's a good stopping point for now. Hopefully you'll join me next time, as we continue into whatever area is coming up next, and hopefully you'll join me then. This is Nigaroth, saying bye.